I have a warning to this video. In this video contains sensitive contents regarding life issues. I highly recommend parents to listen first and decide whether to have your children listen to this video. Hi everyone! How have you been doing last week? We have started a new church calendar as of last week. I hope you all have started a new year with refreshed heart and mind. Then let's start today's class with a gathering prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, thank you for gathering us today. We are waiting for the coming of Jesus. Please help us to prepare ourselves for Jesus. We especially pray for those who are ignorant of God or deny God. Please help more people to know your mercy and truth and to love you more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we are in the second week of Advent, and we are preparing for the second coming of Jesus, we are going to learn about Catholic social teachings in light of God's justice. I am going to introduce Catholic social teachings briefly and then focus on the human rights today. Catholic social teaching, in easy words, is the Church's official teachings on the social issues. Let me explain it with a graph. When God created man in his image and blessed them, he found it very good. Each of us was born in a family. Families make up societies, societies make up nations, nations make up countries, and countries make up the world and we all live in the earth environment. So, without individuals, there is no society, and it is God's will that we fill the earth and use it. But this graph has not only the vertical relationship, but also interactive relationships. Everyone, families, societies, nations, the world and the environment all have to work for the common good. The society must increase individual's development. The country must increase the unity and development of the society. And the world must increase every country's unity and development. When we care for the environment, we can get good things from the environment. The Catholic social teaching teaches us on each individual's, society, nations, the world, and the environment. It also teaches us on the interaction. Those teachings are based on four principles, common good, human dignity, subsidiary, and the universal destination of goods. Let's take into look one by one. The first principle is common good. It means that we all have responsibilities to respect others' fundamental rights and work together to develop the common good. And we all have the right to enjoy the conditions of social life that are brought by the common good. Can you see that the rights and responsibilities are paired to each other? Second is human dignity. It means that everyone has the same dignity regardless of one's ability, income, age, or social level. That is because we are all children of God and created in his image and likeness. Also, Jesus suffered, died, and rose again because of all of us. 
from this human dignity comes human rights, and we all ought to respect others' human rights. The third one is the principle of subsidiary. It means that the world to the nations, nations to the society, society to family, should give help with respect instead of intervention or interference. And every person and family and intermediate group has to offer to the community with freedom and initiative. So, subsidiary implies participation and solidarity. Everyone has right and responsibility to participate for the increase of common good. And by solidarity with people alike and dislike, the community can grow and attain peace. In the society, there should be solidarity among the poor, but also between the poor and the rich. In the world, there should be solidarity among poor countries or rich countries, but also between the poor and rich countries. The principle of subsidiary concerns for totalitarian or dictatorial regimes, which are the systems that are centralized to control all aspects of individual life. From the principle of subsidiary, it draws many rights, such as the right to vote, the right to stand for the election, the right of freedom of peaceful assembly, and petition. The fourth principle is the universal destination of goods and resources. It means that everyone has the right to use the material resources. This right not only includes right for the food and drink, but also includes right for well-being and full development from education and medical services. This right is one of the human rights and is a natural right, so it has priority to other rights such as property rights and the right of free trade. This principle guides prevention of exclusion and exploitation of all people. And it encourages the preferential option for the poor. It also encourages the care for the creation and the environment. From the principle of the universal destination of goods comes the economic justice. We are going to cover it next time. And today, we are going to focus on the human rights that we covered from human dignity. Human rights are natural rights of everyone, and we all have responsibility to respect and keep others' human rights. It is helpful to know the specific examples of human rights, and thankfully, our Saint Pope John Paul II has listed the examples of human rights in the encyclical Centesimus Annus. They are the right to life, the right to live in a united family, the right to grow in personality, the right to work and use the earth's material resources, the right freely to establish a family, and the right of religious freedom. So, at the top of social justice, is human right, and at the top of the human right list is the right to be born and live. However, there are many cases that the right to be born and live is compromised or deprived in this world. Let's take a look at these cases and see why they are really big problems. First case is abortion. Abortion means to kill the babies in mother's womb. We all have started our life from our mom's womb. But few moms make choice to kill their babies
because of financial or other reasons. Even some people regard the earlier stage of infants are not human and it is okay to kill them. However, we Catholics believe that human beings start their life from the very beginning of their life and even at the very first stage of infants have their right to be born and live. So we fight against abortion and against the culture of death. Fighting against abortion is one of the works of mercy because we fight for the defenseless and voiceless little infants. If they could, they would shout, I want to live. Please give me a chance to live. So we are making a voice for them. On the other hand, some people criticize that giving birth to a baby without readiness is not responsible because raising a child is not an easy task and it involves tremendous sacrifices of parents. Women's career break and hardships of single mom's life also increase the temptation of abortion. We should be aware of those cries and do our best to lighten those parents' burdens. Many Catholic parishes run helplines for pregnant women, collect baby items for them, and welcome the babies to their communities. And Catholic moms form communities to help each other. The second case is embryonic stem cell research. If I put it in a simpler way, embryonic stem cell research is to add targeted gene into the very first beginning human cell to cure diseases. More simply put, it is to use a baby to make a medicine. Scary, right? We Catholics protest the embryonic stem cell research because it destroys life and threatens the value of human life. Catholic Church acknowledges the needs and hopes of the embryonic stem cell research. So, instead of using embryonic stem cell, the Church recommends to use adult stem cell or IPS cell, which use adult cell instead of babies. The third case is test tube babies. If I put it in a simpler way, test tube babies are made from a cell that was formed on a glass dish in a lab. The first test tube baby was born in the year of 1978 and still many infertile couples have babies using this technique. Although it gives hope for infertile parents, Catholic Church clearly protests this technique. When the baby cell is made, several cells are made at the same time. Only one or two of them are implanted in the womb and the other cells are discarded or used for experiments although they are all babies. In some cases, several cells are implanted in the womb in order to increase the success of this procedure. And when more than one or two cells start to grow in the womb, the most desirable baby is selected and the other babies are killed. So we Catholics are against this technique and recommend infertile parents to adopt other children or try more natural fertility techniques such as NAPRO technology. The fourth case is death penalty. The death penalty is a public punishment for crime by putting the person into death. It has been used long in human history as means of punishment 
and of prevention of similar crime. However, Catholics protest death penalty because even the cruelest criminals have their right to live and no one has the right to take others' life. The dignity of life is not earned or lost through their behavior. Of course, Catholics care for the victims of violence. The victims deserve our compassion, solidarity, and care for sure. However, standing with victims does not prevent us from protesting death penalty. We call for alternative punishment that does not threat the dignity of life. Sadly, the United States still practice death penalty and there have been 15 executions in 2020 and 22 executions in 2019. Most executions have done using lethal injection, which is the same injection used for abortion. We should pray for the end of death penalty in this country and in the world. The last fifth case is euthanasia. Euthanasia means to kill ill persons or help them to kill themselves. People who are on euthanasia advocate euthanasia for those who suffer from incurable disease or who are in the process of dying. However, Catholic social teaching clearly states that we have no right to ask for this act of killing for ourselves or for those entrusted to our care because life is the gift of God and no one has permission to end the life in any circumstances. We should care for the patients with love so that they do not feel abandoned or useless but to prepare their death with dignity and peace. Well, that's it today. You can see that those right to be born and live issues are very sensitive. Without our form recognition of Catholic social teachings, it is easy to be tempted or take wrong path. While we live on earth, there are many moments that we have to discern our decisions and actions. I hope today's class help you to live in God's truth and justice and also help others to walk on the right path. The right path is the surest and easiest way to meet Jesus in heaven. Then, let's close today's class with a closing prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, Thank you for enlightening us with Catholic teachings and the human rights. Please help us to live in your light so that we may share your love and truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. If you like this video, please subscribe and share. Then I will see you next week. Bye-bye!